أعوذ بالله العظيم بوجه الكريم وسلطانه القديم من الشيطان الرجيم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا الكريم وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب Islam orders us with everything good and forbids us from everything evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to practice Islam in a manner that pleases him subhanahu. And along with that, ayu al-ahbab, is a part of goodness and righteousness is doing righteous deeds. And a part of evilness and sinfulness is what extremism leads a person to do, which is killing oneself or killing and harming others. Ayul Ahbab, the person that commits suicide or does suicide bombings. This person is at best a wicked sinner when they believe they're coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but in fact they're doing something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited in his Quran, in the Quran, in his holy book, in his divine speech, which is perfect. And it's from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and is not created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the one who kills himself. And kills others. Qala ta'ala fi kitabi al-kareem. Wa man yaktul mu'minin muta'amidin fa jizahu jahannam khalidin fiha. وغضب الله عليه ولعنه وعد له عذابا عظيما الله سبحانه وتعالى says in surah an-nisa a ayah an ayah عظيما Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and whoever kills a believer intentionally then his reward is uh, jahannam the hellfire and he will be in it forever. And the anger of Allah will be upon him. And his curses. And Allah has, has uh, pro prepared for him a wicked punishment. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those people who kill the believers intentionally and who kill themselves so the suicide bomber the person who does these acts of extremism for example it's very commonplace in Pakistan and Afghanistan and Iraq so people go to police stations they go to all kind of other facilities hospitals what happened in Yemen uh, and they blow themselves up and they kill innocent people women children it really doesn't matter to them that this type of extremism has nothing to do with Islam and in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us against this most of them they don't know most of the people are disobedient sinners and may Allah forgive us all of our sins and protect us from the evil and the wicked of wickedness of extremism and the evil of the Khawarij and the people of Tikfir, the people who exhort people to declare other Muslims as disbelievers and then make their blood lawful and then kill and spread evil around the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah wa humma mufsidun. Verily, they're the, they're the ones who spread facade, spread wickedness around the earth. All those Tikfiris, all those fake jihadis, all those other fake people who spend their time and energy and efforts 
causing facade around the earth, spreading wickedness and evil. They fall under this punishment when they exhort people to kill and when they are part and, uh, and participants in killing and practicing this extremism. The Prophet ﷺ said, Beware of the seven deadly sins. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned amongst those seven sins, he said one of them is to take a life which Allah has made sacred except by uh, the truth, meaning that under the situation of capital punishment where a person has done a crime that is punishable by death, then they do not fall under this. But just indiscriminate wanton violence and killing, these kind of evil things, what these uh, suicide bombers doing, what these other uh, maniacs that go around shooting up people and shooting up hospitals, killing men, women, and children, and old people, these people and blowing up masajid and blowing up churches and whatever else they do, that these kind of actions, they fall under this because they kill those who Allah has made sacred, whose lives have been uh, declared sacred. By who? Rabbil Alameen. So this is a admonishment and a warning to beware of extremism and to beware of those actions which are a result of extremism and extremism ayul ahbab is going beyond the hud it's going beyond the bounds that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set the limits of the sharia allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a divine law which is from him subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, as articulated in the Quran and as articulated on the tongue of the Prophet والسلام, and in his actions and in those things that he allowed and accepted Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fi Kitab al-Kareem وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسُكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Nisa and do not kill yourselves verily Allah is ever merciful to you when we contemplate that verse just on its apparent meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says well I talk to land physical do not kill yourselves verily Allah in the law can it become Rahima verily Allah is most merciful to you showing us that when we implement this in our lives and we see for example the people who are terminally ill and as they say uh, as we have in the states and in some of the other western countries the that people have a right to to take their life this is the according to some aspects or uh, people fight for this right the right the right the right to terminate their lives if they are uh, terminally ill and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the shubahat, the shubah. He says, do not kill yourselves. Verily, your Lord is ever merciful to you. So although a person struggles, maybe they have cancer, maybe they have AIDS, maybe they have whatever illness that they suffer and the pain that they go through, still your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever merciful to you. But we don't reflect on that. We don't think about that there's expiation in what in the pain that we uh, and the suffering that we may endure and that the suffering and pain of the hereafter is much more severe and there's no comparison this is why Ahli Iman the believer is ever Haris in trying to preserve his life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take care of their Iman safeguarding their iman and safeguarding the rights of others and knowing and believing in the qadr of Allah the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the, punish, the the sickness that they may have or the ailments that they have is in accordance with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they're patient with that sickness as 
the prophets والسلام, set the example, especially the case of Prophet Ayyub والسلام, that with those, by bearing the difficulties and the burdens that have been placed upon them, and realizing the mercy of their Lord and relying, being reliant upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this increases Ahli Iman in Iman. Increases the people of faith in their faith. But those people who are weak, those people who don't either believe in the Qadr or they uh, have issue with the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, then they won't be able to withstand and perhaps it may lead them to even taking their lives. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from everything which displeases him. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.